Right then, welcome back. Still Breakfast Central on News Central this wonderful Tuesday with Olisa and Felicity. Let's go straight to our impact conversation. And it takes us to the Horn of Africa, all about the Tigray region and the crisis that have emerged there since the 4th of November 2020 in Tigray of Ethiopia. And it's between the Tigray regional government, led by the Tigray People's Liberation Front, that's the TPLF, and the Ethiopian National Defense Forces, uh, aided by the Ethiopian Federal Police and Regional State Police and the uh, Gendarmerie over there, the forces of neighboring um, Hara region of the Afa region with reported involvement of uh, the Eritrean Defense Forces. War crimes have been committed by both sides during the conflict. More than 60,000 people have fled the conflict in Ethiopia's Tigray region to seek refuge in neighboring Sudan, and some of them have become refugees for the second time in less than 30 years. Mm. Aid workers continue to receive reports of attacks on civilians and uh, civilian infra infrastructure like hospitals uh, in central and northwestern and even southwestern uh, zones, including the house-to-house -house searches uh, accompanied by indiscriminate extrajudicial killings reported in the area. Uh, sadly, gender-based violence remains widespread and about 4.5 million people are currently in need of humanitarian assistance in Tigray. Now, after nearly four months of fighting between armed groups, hundreds of thousands have been forced to flee their homes and more than four million people are in need of food assistance. Now, it has become vital that aid gets through to the people uh, now on the edge of starvation. Now, joining us to discuss all about this is uh, Abdenor Nuri, who is a journalist uh, from the Horn of, uh, Horn of Africa. Welcome, uh, Abdenor. Once again, good to have you on Breakfast Central. Uh, good to have you, too. Thank you for having me this morning. All right. Um, uh, could, okay. could you give us the latest from um, Tigray? The conflict seems unending. Uh, the latest uh, uh, that uh, the Doctors Without Borders, the MSF, have uh, really shared uh, their accounts in terms of the destruction to mm. medical facilities, where they're saying that uh, there is poor access to medical services uh, for the people there in the, the Tigray region uh, due to what they call as a destruction of the medical uh, facilities in that area, mm. and an account that was also corroborated uh, by other medical uh, providing humanitarian agencies, but we yet to hear from the Ethiopian government uh, regarding those uh, allegations. Well, uh, to ask you, Abdin, there's been multiple claims of ethnic cleansing going on in the region, even from the U.S. government. Has how true is this? How you know viable is this information about accusations of ethnic cleansing? They are really serious. These accusations um, have historically dominated uh, the Ethiopian politics, uh, depending on uh, the ruling uh, ethnic uh, community. However, the Ethiopian government, led by the Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, uh, have denied these allegation, allegations because Ethiopia itself uh, is a country that is dominated uh, by um, ethnicity. And in those nine regions, mm. uh, the Tigray is, uh, makes, make up for 5% of the entire population, even though they have been in uh, powerful government positions and global positions, um, uh, according to the Ethiopian uh, political landscape. But the Ethiopian government has maintained its denial that this is ethnic cleansing, but they termed it as a response um, to what was an attack against its uh, military bases in Tigray. Mm. There have been accusations and counter accusations on both sides of war crimes and crimes against humanity. What has been the response so far to the allegations from both sides and, of course, from the international community? Is it um, in any way showing that it is effective? Well, uh, in the in the um, early weeks or, or, or the first few months of the uh, U.S. President uh, Joe Biden's uh, government, we've seen Secretary Blinken mm. um, also wading into this matter because as we speak, uh, many parts have uh, tried to rather uh, seek mediation and try to find a political solution to this stalemate because these accusations have been a stumbling block uh, to peace talks or a, or a resolution to this entire situation. Um, many are calling for neutral forces to be sent into the area, but the Ethiopian government maintains that that will be transgressing into its sovereignty. Uh, but we, what we have until now is that everybody is calling for mediation and for a political solution to this uh, ongoing issue. 
But then again, what is uh, remaining is uh, for the Ethiopian government uh, to give its consent and its uh, approval of whether uh, it will really like to address this issue in a more uh, peaceful manner and uh, through mediation, um, other than um, its own um, government uh, leadership style. Well, speaking about government leadership style, Abdin, you just mentioned, you know, Anthony Blinken, the Secretary of State for the U.S. in the country where just recently, a couple of days ago, and I'm sure you might have heard this one, uh, Mr. Bekhane Kidamarian, who was the uh, Deputy Chief of Mission to the Ethiopian Embassy in Washington, resigning and accusing the Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed of leading the country into darkness. Well, um... The, the other, the other uh, controversial issue or the other critical mm. matter uh, regarding this ongoing Tigray crisis is that there is still uh, uh, people who are in leadership mm. who's, uh, uh, who are, are still uh, alleged to be members of the former Tigrayan ruling uh, coalition, the TPLF. Okay. And um, Ethiopian um, political analysts are really terming this one as more of a political response based on political affiliation other than uh, a humanitarian or an activism-driven uh, political decisions by office holders in uh, different parts or uh, in different organizations across the world. Mm. We've had one of the senior Africa Union advisors um, uh, in, the, in the first few weeks of the Tigray crisis um, um, losing his position in the organization due to what was also uh, in relation to this ongoing Tigray crisis. We've also had the, the Ethiopian ambassador or the Ethiopian embassy in the United Kingdom also responding to mm. the Medical Sans Frontiers um, report regarding the situation, the medical crisis in the Tigray region. So unless there are other, um, you know, other talks or other long-standing or long-term peace resolutions regarding this Tigray crisis, all decisions or all political positions taken by leading figures in Ethiopia are until now interpreted based on where they see from their from their well, uh, well Abdin, we seem to be leaving out one more you know reported player you know in this whole scenario eritrea eritrean forces in tigray how can you conf can you confirm those reports about you know killings from those forces well, um, it has been really a very challenging uh, issue to, for, for, for especially the media fraternity because mm. we very really understand uh, uh, Ethiopia and uh, Eritrea's uh, pre-existing uh, accusation on their approach towards the media and uh, openness. But despite that, there have been um, revelations by some members of, uh, of you know, Ethiopian um, security players um, either belonging to the TPLF or, or currently in Ethiopia, who have given their witness accounts of the presence of Eritrean troops. But despite that, there haven't been uh, tangible evidence mm. uh, that has been able to, to, to serve as a source for, for the media. And of course, at this, at this level or at this juncture, uh, what we could be addressing will be just allegations because Ethiopia and Eritrea have also had some restrictions for the media, especially during the coverage on the ongoing crisis. And this has inhibited uh, to what extent the media can, uh, or the media was able to bring out the, in, the involvement of Eritrean forces in this. Uh, but right. as it uh, stands, in the Horn of Africa, there, those ac accusations last. Mm. All right, I, I want to take you back to something you said earlier about uh, possible solutions. You said uh, there has to be some political solution to the situation in Tigray. What are the offers on the table and what, what is your assessment of the response to the you know, possible solution to some of the situation in Tigray? That is on the one part. I also want to ask you um, your thinking on the report that 950,000 people need urgent assistance and remain in areas that are still hard to reach of our humanitarian organization. What do you think needs to be done differently to get these people the help that they need? Uh, well, uh, first of all, Ethiopia hosts the Africa Union headquarters um, in Addis Ababa, and uh, uh, Mohamed Faki, the AU chairperson, was recently re-elected for another term, uh, or his mandate was extended. And in addition to that, the IGAD uh, executive uh, director, uh, Workne Gebeyehu, himself is an Ethiopian, 
And uh, one of the other factors that have really uh, put a spin on the ongoing Tigray crisis is the political situation in Somalia itself, because the country was planning to hold its uh, elections, but nothing has taken place yet. And there are pulls and pushes as we speak. So the situation in Somalia and uh, the other existing regional challenges, the, the diplomatic uh, standoffs, though, uh, it's not yet clear to what extent. This has made it hard for these traditional players who used to mediate in circumstances or in scenarios like this to come forward. But we've had efforts from uh, various leaders in the region to try mm. and mediate between the parties. The other issue is the Sudan, Ethiopia, Egypt dam standoff. So this timing and this moment has mm. indeed been one of the one of the most challenging for Ethiopia in Ethiopia's history mm. because it has met itself in this situation when there are other uh, directly unrelated but affecting uh, on finding a resolution for this. The other question regarding the humanitarian crisis, uh, we've had also the United Nations, uh, uh, the World Food Program and many other agencies dealing with humanitarian uh, work in the Tigray region. They have maintained and until this moment saying that there is an urgent need for assistance. Mm. In as much right. as the Ethiopian government granted access to the humanitarian workers, not, not, uh, not to the amount of uh, humanitarian assistance as expected, but we remain positive and uh, humanitarian agencies across the continent remain positive that this access will be granted to ensure this uh, humanitarian crisis is controlled. Uh, we certainly In hope that to, is yeah. the uh, situation. Mm. Um, I mean, hope is necessary, but we also would uh, love to see more action that allow people get access to basic uh, human needs. We thank you very much, Abdinor, for uh, your time and your thoughts on Breakfast Central. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Okay, the situation there as uh. in other parts of the world where you have conflict is mm. never pleasant talking about pleasant been, rather and, talking and about the, it because been, you know it's always the citizen that bears the brunt mm. of the decisions of the leaders because the leaders uh, like it or not they're somewhere having conversation discussing how things are going to mm. happen but the ordinary man on the street is the one being punished basically yeah. in my thinking because they are the one that are the ones that are becoming homeless they are the ones mm. that are now needing humanitarian assistance, their totally livelihood so. messed up. So, yeah, let's hope for the best. All right, so I will take a quick breather right here on Breakfast Central and we'll come back. There's still more to come. Yes, indeed, business. Don't go nowhere.